Support WrestleTalk! Be friendly in the comments. It's time to address those CM Punk return rumours to WWE. Spoiler, I don't think they're true. I'm Ollie Davis, this is Luke Owen. Welcome to the Saturday edition of Wrestle Ramble, the kind of magazine show which is brought to you by Fight Forever Wrestling. That is a new UK promotion. They've got a string of dates in December, which doesn't just have wrestling, with matches between Jimmy Havoc and Cody Rhodes. That's a hell of a bout. And a, and a slew of other fantastic... Matches. 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 Ran out of steam halfway through there. Keep, keep going, you got this. It's also got live podcast recordings with Bruce Pritchard and Comrade afterwards. There's something to wrestle. And after that, an after party with The Godfather. That's going to be cray cray. And of course, after the after party is what? I, I, I don't know. It's the, it's the hotel lobby. Oh, it's that R. Kelly song. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A uh, uh, fun fact, I hated that song when it came out. Ah, bounce, bounce, bounce. Yeah, I hated that song, man, because, I'll be honest, it doesn't sound like Faith No More. Ergo, I do not like it. Yeah, well, it's a tune. So let's get on to, oh yeah, buy tickets for Fight Forever in the link in the video description below, and go and follow them on Facebook and Twitter at Fight Forever UK. So, CM Punk, we talked about this on SmackDown's review mm -hmm. uh, on our Wednesday episode because there were some CM Punk chants when Shane McMahon came out, didn't turn heel. Well, someone pointed out that we missed a crucial part of that segment. Okay. Uh, we both did, and uh, I went back and I was like, nah, surely that, that can't be right. And it isn't in the WWE.com, uh, the, like, the YouTube version of it, but I went mm. back and I watched the original feed. When Paige is posing with the photograph, Shane essentially snatches the cup out of our hands to pose on his own with it huh that would be a subtle heel move hmm like i love slow burns i love subtlety and wrestling mm -hmm. uh, i think that might be too subtle because we both missed it and our job is to review these shows well i think it is more subtle and that's a good kind of subtle because I'm glad that we it was something that was addressed to us and we were able to go back, or at least I was able to go back and rewatch it. And actually, I thought it was a really cool moment. I just mm. happened to miss it first time round. But I prefer that to... Do you remember the subtle humour they did with The Shield where Baron wanted to like, press charges on them or something? Yes. And a, a cop just happened to help them, but he was wearing a badge that said Ambrose suggesting that he was like Ambrose's brother or cousin or something and everyone was like you guys are idiots he was wearing a name badge that was far too subtle okay well I just think after the really in your face crown jewel angle to go like one frame of subtlety isn't 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 a good next step in telling the story. I liked it. But on second one. what happened was because oh, Shane McMahon won the World Cup to determine the best in the world a lot of people started chanting CM Punk, and that's because CM Punk's whole thing was I'm the best in the world. Like, best in the world, that was on his t-shirt. I had that t-shirt, I'm a mark. And people have, like, a bunch of websites have speculated that this is the start of a CM Punk storyline to return to WWE to feud with Shane McMahon. Culminating in a match at WrestleMania. Mm. I mean, I think it's a load of hogwash. Yes. Gobbledygook, poppycock, um, balderdash, and all other sundries. I think it's a load of codswallop. There, there has been like... The, it's kind of one of those stories where someone... Someone did a, like a quite obvious form of speculation. It was comic book. Best in the world. What was it? Was it specifically comic I, book? Well, when I was doing the research for it today in my news episode, yeah, um, the Mecca News, which went up on Friday, I believe it was comic book that did the original article, and mm. then a lot of people have gone off from that, saying that well, I think comic book reported this when really it's just based on speculation it's and an article. Yeah, like like an opinion piece that's been spun into that because no credible. Places like I'm talking Wrestle Votes, Wrestling Observer Newsletter, PW Insider, Pro Wrestling Torch, uh, Pro Wrestling Sheet. Say what you want about Dave Meltzer and various dirt sheets, they have proven track records of stuff. Absolutely. And if only one of them is reporting something, you're like, okay, you know, I'll, t I'll take this for what it is. If a bunch of them are reporting it, you're like, well, this is obviously true. Like the big cast stuff that happened earlier this year, everyone with all their different sources was telling the same tale. But then when none of them are reporting it, and it's you can't even track down the original 
thing of the source. I'd say like David Bixen span of uh, SE Scoops and Fightful. They're also really good. Just don't, don't want to leave any names out. There's loads of loads of great sites. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like when you don't leave, this has come from nowhere. It hasn't even come from Justin Barrasso of Sports <laughs> Illustrated. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like we, we like Barrasso. He he he's column on Sports Illustrated. It's very good, but. He got everything wrong this year. He I, he has got a source within WWE that is feeding him false information so that WWE can discredit all dirt sheet writers. Really, it's quite genius because what he is being told is like, it sounds credible. It sounds like it could be possible. It could have been Rey Mysterio versus John Cena at WrestleMania. It could have been Rey Mysterio as Ronda's partner at WrestleMania. It wasn't. Ray wasn't even there. But it all sounds like it's very credible stuff. And I that that's my I'm putting my tinfoil hat on. That's my theory. Yeah. That, that yeah. WWE have given him bad information on purpose. Because they can then go, Told you Dave Meltzer's full of rubbish. Yeah, because like That's what the, they love to do. All these wrestling news sites, like they have their sources and you've I, I find it fascinating. Like those sources are gonna have their own agendas. Mm-hmm. So even though like you know, Mike Johnson or, or Dave Meltzer believes their sources or at least says, hey, this is what a source has told me. And usually, you know, journalistic integrity means you corroborate that with other sources. Uh, to, and then you're like, OK, there is something to this. They there's not even a source. But those sources have their own agendas. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I don't like Braun Strowman. Let's just say that this is a story that's come out this week. Braun Strowman has backstage heat. He's getting a spot that I think I should have. Uh, so I'm just going to tell a few of these sites that Braun Strowman doesn't turn up on time. Yeah. And even though, you know, there might not be any heat on him and he does turn up a, a late a few times, maybe that will start the snowball. And then you'll you'll sort of bury that person down. So, but not even that is happening. <laughs> yeah. with the, that's what the largest thing is. Not even that is happening with this punk story. It's just... Someone has taken the best in the world tagline from the World Cup at Crown Jewel and spun that out into its own monster. Yes, because the other side of this story is that the reason why it was called the World Cup to determine the best in the world and the reason why the commentators were hammering that home so much is because the plan all along was for Shane to win. He was not meant to be a part of the tournament. So you were meant to go like, well, that's a load of gubbins because he wasn't part of the tournament yet he's won and now Shane McMahon's the best in the world cultaholic are gonna do a video where they overreact to it that's what they were on that's what they were after they wanted people like us I mean granted I don't think we gave them the reaction they wanted because we laughed the whole thing thought it was really it's, funny. It's hilarious and infuriating infuriating not- but I override it with laughter mm. because it was at the same time hilarious I just thought it was nepotism I thought it was nepotism gone mad as opposed to we're trying to work you into hating this which as Laurie brilliantly pointed out that's perfect for a Saudi Arabian pay-per-view <laughs> yeah. like they love nepotism <laughs> like, hey what a finish so yeah so the, the idea was that Shane would then slowly turn heel he would start to buy into this idea that he is quote the best in the world and it will create this arrogant persona and that will then lead into some WrestleMania matches because, of course, Shane's got to have his WrestleMania match. And also SmackDown moving to Fox. The McMahons think, well, the best way to make engaging television in 2018 is to have a McMahon heel authority figure. That's what worked for them before. That's why their ratings are down at the moment because they don't have a McMahon authority figure, a heel McMahon authority figure because Stephanie's not around at the moment. She hasn't really been around since Mania. So... That's why ratings are crumbling. These are views that we don't agree with. Absolutely this is just not. this is just what is supposedly the McMahon and management's idea behind booking wrestling shows. Uh, but but so yeah, like the, that's that CM Punk does not factor into any of those plans. Absolutely not. It, it's just a way to position Shane more strongly for when SmackDown moves to Fox next year, if if these plans even happen. But to backtrack from the World Cup thing even further, the World Cup tournament. That wasn't even designed for, for, like, that wasn't all that's used this to turn Shane McMahon heel and retroactively book a World Cup. Reportedly, from WrestleTalk, the reason that the World Cup was in Crown Jewel in the first place was because Saudi Arabia were jealous of Qatar, who were hosting the Football World Cup in, or, or Soccer World Cup in 2020? Yes. Yes. And or is it Russia 2020? Hold so on. maybe it's 2020 2024 2024 it's one 
of the next ones which totally happened above board and was in no way bribed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that football and the inner workings of football politics are all above board. Oh, yeah. Everyone is just really upfront and honest about everything. No one is buying people off in the uh, in the upper echelons. They're good guys in that football game. It is uh, Qatar yeah. 2022. Yeah, they're good guys in that football game. Much better than us. Yep, Much absolutely. better than us in our in our wrestling world mm-hmm. yeah the, po- the politics and I'm backstage an, infighting is just a thing in wrestling I'm, it's nowhere else I'm an idiot I just said it was, it's going to be Russia 2020 we just had the, it was this year it was this yeah. year I'm an absolute idiot I watched one game in a pub <laughs> oh we god I went we, to the freaking so we watched it together park, we yeah. watched it at Hyde Park <laughs> yeah it's coming home it was a great day uh, but yeah so because Qatar have that apparently Saudi Arabia were quite annoyed and jealous of that because politics and infighting there's various I mean, I'm not going to go into the Middle Eastern situation and various conflicts between the the kingdoms there. But Saudi Arabia were like, huh, well, we can do a World Cup and it's going to be the best one ever. Yeah, because it determines the best in the world. Yeah, because it's such a (laughs) clunky phrase. That didn't come, like, as clunky as WWE phrases are, at least they kind of make sense. It doesn't sound like it's been backwardsly translated from Japanese. (laughs) Apart from it's the one night of the year when Raw and SmackDown starts go head-to-head in direct competition. But that is, I'll be honest, that to me sounds clunkier than the World Cup to determine the best in the world. But I think it makes sense more in the English language. (laughs) The World Cup to determine the best in the world repeats its own (laughs) Like it's, it's I, okay, I get it. Itself. It's a World Cup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't need to. Don't need an explanation of it. With all Americans. Yeah. Uh, so yes, even the World Cup format idea before the Shane McMahon heel turn plans that was in no way linked to CM Punk. Of course, we could be sitting here in two weeks' time after Survivor Series and go, "Hey, humble pie." Yeah, humble pie. We did not see Punk returning. <laughs> Uh, And the other side to this story as well is that it was announced uh, on Thursday that CM Punk is now going to be moving into a commentator role for CFFC. Um, I'm not quite sure what the... I can't remember what it stands for. It's like Cage Fighting fighting championships or something cage fighting fighting championships yeah cage yeah. full of fighting championships maybe yeah, that's what it is cage full yeah a cage full of fighting championships can, can we get some really fun acronyms please yes. in the comments but that, CFFC they're hol- holding their first ever event on the UFC fight pass it's kind of like UFC's version of NXT it's kind of like a bit of a developmental system mm. and like Kimbo Slice started in oh so C- it is a UFC yeah so it's on Come it's on right. um, on fight pass on December ah. 14th on my birthday uh, and CM Punk is going to be doing Doing the color commentary for that so there are theories and speculation that he might be posi- like positioning himself out of the octagon after his stellar ufc run and uh <laughs> move into a commentator's desk instead that was so bitchy <laughs> someone said oh my god I, I made a bit of a joke about it last week and someone was like so unnecessary for you to keep bringing up cm punk's mma record mm. it's not even related to this story but it's the reason why he's not in the octagon probably uh, it's But it's interesting to see him take this role. Of course, he's sticking with MMA. He has said after the trial, never say never, he said that. But then, because we all jumped on that, he then said unequivocally, I am not returning to wrestling. I, that part of my life is done with. And he's like, this is a guy who is straight edge. That's a pretty extreme lifestyle to have in terms of commitment. And I think he seemed, he strikes me as the kind of guy that when he makes a decision... He's going to stick to it. He's going to stick to it. He's he's trying to do his acting and things like that. So I think he's got other hashtag other projects that he'd rather be doing than wrestling. So he he starred in the recently a horror movie with the... Uh, With AJ Lee as well. The the, the Soska twins. The Soska twins, a female directing duo. Of American Mary, which is a great film. Yeah, and... Like, that, like he could be perfectly suited. I haven't seen his performance in it, but he could be perfectly suited as a kind of featured player in those direct-to-DVD horror they, movies. They've directed wrestlers as well. Yeah. They did uh, that Big Show movie mm. where he fought um, Superman. I want to say Hard Pound. <laughs> I'm just going to call it Hard Pound. Uh, but also, he's he's doing not just acting stuff, but hosting stuff. He's doing the commentary role here. He was also the commentator for Beastmaster. Oh, yes, yes, On Netflix, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, as was Stu Bennett, Wade Barrett. I don't think they were, to, were, they, they were together. I don't think they were together. No, because... Wade Barrett was on the English commentary team. Yes. They have, like, commentary teams by country. It's ridiculously overproduced. (laughs) 
I've never seen it. It's extreme. Is it, is it like American Ninja Warrior? Yeah, but the American all, Ninja Warrior, which sounds like a, a canon movie from the 1980s. <laughs> Everything it takes place in this giant beast beast structure. What? Yeah, it's enormous, and you've got all the the what, obstacles levels? in there. No, it's it's more of a through thing. But at the end, you have to scale the height of the beast. And <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, it's like his production company. No way. He just has an intro and outro. He's like, "This is the thing. This is gonna happen." As well, uh, here we live. And then that, you don't see him for the rest. Slow, slow walking. Yeah, and then the rest of the show has nothing of him. And then at the end, well, that would be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> this must have just happened. It's not Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> it's just a lie. Well, no, no, no. That's can't much be, better. You reckon? <laughs> That's a much better slice okay, alone. Sorry. It's, uh, it's, so what you're saying, it's not like Steve Austin is on the Broken Skull Challenge. I'm Steve Austin, my Broken Skull Challenge. He's the best thing about oh, that yeah. show. It's wonderful television because he's on it. Second place is a piece <laughs> of ass. So this is just a very long way <laughs> of reiterating that CM, we don't think CM Punk, like, definitely not this instance, definitely not the World Cup and Shane McMahon stuff, as we said on the SmackDown episode, like, if that's the way you're bringing CM Punk back, I don't want any part of it. But also, a long, like, looking ahead, I don't think he's, if he ever returns, it won't be for five years. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday evening, we are going to be live in London. No, not just, like, a little pub in Kilburn or in the, your friend's youth centre in Bethnal Green. I play D&D in Kilburn. Huh. Fun fact. We are going to be in Leicester Square. That's legit. That's like the English Times Square. You can see Piccadilly Circus from it. Becky Lynch was in Piccadilly Circus on Thursday. That's where they have film premieres for the big Odeon. That big on screens Leicester you Square. see in every movie where they're trying to represent London. That's Piccadilly Circus. That's Leicester Square. And we are going to be on one of the side streets of Leicester Square mm. in the Prince Charles Cinema, the greatest cinema in the United Kingdom. In the world. And we will be host... I haven't been... I can't vouch for that. Well, I mean, that's what that's I've been to a fair few cinemas in England and that's my favourite but Fair I can't enough. like the world's a big place man we have a we need a world cup of cinema <laughs> to determine the best cinema in the world uh, but we're going to be there on Tuesday and we're going to host a wrestle along screening of Beyond the Mat arguably the greatest wrestling movie made of all time up Absolutely. there with fictional The Wrestler by mm -hmm. Aronofsky I would say and Wrestling with Shadows and, those are my three favourites and Mr Nanny uh, of the, course, the Hulk Hogan comedy. Of ready course. to rumble. Yeah, ready for to the rumble. Lols. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. a that's a good fight. <laughs> that's a good, that's top. a good top fight. <laughs> so we're going to be hosting a screening of that. We're going to do a meet and greet in the bar beforehand at seven thirty. Film starts at eight thirty. It'll come off air. We, we, we're going to have a raw overrun of about 15 minutes. And then we're going to do a live wrestle ramble on stage, reviewing the film. It's going to be excellent. Everyone should come along. Absolutely, yeah. If you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets now. The mm. Prince Charles Cinema website. At, oh, not only that, but we've got the director of the film, Barry Blaustein, has recorded us a special introduction for the movie. It's only going to be seen there. And... We are not sure whether the podcast that we record after the film, because we're going to be doing a live episode of Wrestle Ramble, is going to be released. Some technical things. Well, it's not like we don't want to release it, but it just might not be able to be. So the only way you're going to be able to see this is if you come on down to see us. Yes. And we're, th this, we're going to do a bit of discussion on air now mm -hmm. because we haven't seen each other all day. I've been elsewhere being business. busy. Business, business, business. 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 But um, we need... We, it's a wrestle along. Yes. And I feel like we haven't got enough gimmicks in in the watching act of the movie. Well, also, you recently rewatched it. Mm -hmm. And because we had this idea of doing a wrestle along where we're like, we'll do chants throughout the film and we'll have like some games that we can play while the film is going on. We're going to bring the, the atmosphere of a wrestling show to a cinema screen. And then you reminded me, because it's been a while since I've seen it. That the film gets a bit dour oh. in the uh, in the second half, <laughs> and maybe chants aren't really appropriate. Yeah, so I was like, I was writing down all these ideas. I was like, yeah, this will be a fun chant. This will be a fun chant. And then, oh, Jake the Snake Roberts <laughs> is taking crack. But it, it, uh, he's better now. Yeah, but I, it's really emotionally affecting. I know, but and the end of the you said there's a bit in the at the end of the film. It's not spoilers. It's the end of Royal Rumble 1999, where The Rock just hits 
Mick Foley over the head again and again and again with a chair. It cuts to Noel Foley, oh, and, Dewey as, Foley. and Dewey Foley at ringside burying their heads in their mother's arms. Just they are crying. crying. That's not a wrestling angle. That's real. And it is absolutely, it is so sad. It is so sad and emotionally affecting to watch it. What does Luke pitch to me? Let's have everyone counting <laughs> along with the chair shots. <laughs> Rewatch the movie, Luke. <laughs> completely forgot. It's not, not appropriate. <laughs> Yeah, it's not. Uh, imagine <laughs> when we get to ten, uh, <laughs> as they're c- carrying Noel out. Sorry, right, mix fine as well, mostly. Okay, so we need ideas. <laughs> we need ideas for participation in the comments. Uh, we're kind of outsourcing this to you. Also, bring signs. Yes, we'll have a sign competition. Best sign gets a prize. Haven't figured out what yet, but that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Any other bit? Uh, just get your tickets. It's going to be a, a real good lark. Um, we might even go for some drinks afterwards because there are plenty of pubs nearby. It's Leicester Square for God's sake. So we may even go to like a a, a, a Weatherspoon, a boozer, a boozer afterwards and have a couple of drinks. And it'd be really excellent to hang out with Swaff Nation and Pledge Hammers alike. And we're, we're really, really looking forward to meeting everyone. It's time for Crap Gimmicks. If you're thinking to yourself, what the heckins is a crap gimmick? Crap Gimmicks is a section that we do here every single Saturday on the Wrestle Ramble where you, the SWAF Nation, submit to us your crap gimmicks and then we, the owners and promoters of Crap Gimmick Wrestling, will decide if we want to sign them. We only sign one per week. Sometimes we might not sign any. If you're thinking, well, what is a crap gimmick? We like to think of it of that 90s era of WWF. You are a wrestler and a blank, or you can be more abstract. If you want to submit your suggestion to the crap gimmick, roster all you have to do is email luke at wrestletalk.com one more time luke at wrestletalk.com massive backlog you know disclaimer massive backlog we're currently at the end of july which july 21st is where we currently are at the moment with this so oh, we still got a lot to get through diamond dave uh his submission is you ready are you gonna do some business emails I, well it's just because the merch for the event uh <laughs> We need, this, C- could said, this not wait? Well, it says within the hour. Okay, I can do crap gimmicks. Okay, we're, we're, we're against it to get merch. We're going to a Rev Pro show tonight as well, so we're really trying to condense all of our work into to where we can. So anyway, Diamond Dave has suggested. My crap gimmick suggestion is Spielman, Brown, and Olsen, a three-man tag team of wrestling lawyers who <laughs> specialise in representing people injured in the workplace. Spotting a gap in the market, they have moved into wrestling to represent the many, the many backstage staff, security men, and law enforcers who were routinely beaten up and injured by wrestlers in backstage segments. That's already really good all it takes is for a grumpy heel to throw a, a floor manager into plywood and spielman brown and olsen will be handing out an ultimatum <laughs> settle out of court or settle in the ring uh, coming out to the ring in full legal gowns and wigs they serve out justice using Freebird legal guidelines their finisher is a shield like three-man powerbomb called breach of the peace however mm. they have a three-man submission hold a full nelson and two heel hooks which they reverse for attempted murder such as case of tipping over ambulances or setting fire to your brother this is called case dismissed the commentators loudly refer to them as the dogs of fairness i really like this uh i feel like there's something missing though when you said they come down in the full that's like english law regalia with the wigs and the gowns Mm -hmm. when you said like a because it's kind of like a a compensation claims thing I, I pictured in my head. More like the CPC as opposed to the Crown Prosecution Service as opposed to the CPS would be then, rather than like law law. Mm. Yeah, so I, I saw this more as you better call Saul's. You Lionel Hutz. Yeah, over it. So an, an American act. Yeah. Especially with like the three names. Although, like, have you been injured in the workplace? That feels like a very British thing. I mean, imagine, imagine it's an American. It's from America, well. like that whole suing oh, culture. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I. So. And and just uh, yeah, I do really. It's such a good idea, but I just think the concept needs more development. Mm. Okay, okay, carry on. So Brian Farrell on July twenty first has suggested at the real Olivia McNeil. Olivia is an Instagram model who is wrestling to up her uh, popularity. She uses hip words like clout or whatever the trend is, and has a typical look of an attitude clout. era female. Brackets what Vince likes. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if that's what uh, Instagram models are using at the moment. I think they more use the word brand. Clout? Yeah. You know clout. I know what the word means, but is it like a... Does it have another Instagram meaning? 
Urban Dictionary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, being famous and having influence. Well, there you go. Should, should, we, uh, should we use this in a sentence? Mm-hmm. Wow. Rice, Mitch and Banks have hella clout. Well, I mean, they certainly do. So, Dictionary Corner. turns yeah. out that we are over 30 and we don't know anything that the kids are into these days. You know Fleek. Y- yes. I... I've never heard Fleek. No, you haven't, because we talked about this with The Apprentice yeah. using it last week. Great episode of The Apprentice this week, BT Dubs. We haven't discussed that yet. <laughs> um, anyway, where are we? She has the typical look of an attitude era female that Vince likes. She is accompanied to the ring by a man dubbed The Editor, who takes pictures of her when her opponent is down, which she looks at and sees if it's good enough to put up on her Instagram account. That's if not, good. she'll take another, which can lead to the opponent taking the advantage. Her music is typical... I like this. Her music is typical model music. What would you say is typical model music? Okay, so it could be like a Tyler Breeze where it's sort of a fashion yeah. runway, something quite... Uh, look in my eyes yeah, but, but when that. you look at me. Or it could they be Mandy Rose, gorgeous. which is, is more, like, model mu- it's more like... Low-rent porn. It music. does, it, yeah. Um, where are we? A uh, music is typical model music, and her fishnet is the nose job, which is a double underhook face buster. She also uses Tyler Breeze's beauty shot and the timeline, which is a spear to the uh, her, the back of her opponents while they are in the corner. I like. I really started out liking this, but then it went off in a in a direction I think is outdated. Not in an offensive way. I just think I you're stuck on the attitude era pr- presentation of women for for an Instagram gimmick. Whereas maybe it's just the sort of Instagram lady I find myself on. <laughs> but they are all like fitness Instagram people. Mm-hmm. And they've got the butts and they're poking out. And they do all those things. Yeah. And it's not as it's not as like fake boobs, blonde hair stuff. It's more... We, um... Oh, it's an, I, it's well, okay, difficult. So I, I, I'm not on Instagram. I don't... <coughs> I, I guess the Instagram is a bit like Twitter for pictures. That's pretty much what I can gather. Um, but I've no need to to have another social media feed. I barely use the ones that I've got. Um, <laughs> what? Well, t- Twitter is the only one I'll use because I'm I'd really say on. You barely used you use Twitter quite a lot. <laughs> I use it once a week. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sometimes people reply to you. Yeah. Um, but we, yesterday, someone sent us a message to uh, say, like, hey, guys, why don't you get a, uh, a female presenter on board? Why don't you follow WWE's mentality at the moment and have a female presenter? And I was like, given the comments that my cousin got for having a picture, uh, or the picture of my cousin in Monday's News, I'm just not sure some of our audience are ready for that yet. But someone got in touch with me on Twitter to recommend an Instagram model, because mm. apparently she's a big wrestling fan. Did you click on that link? I clicked it to see where she was based. Birmingham. So, no. I clicked on the link and scrolled a little bit more. Yeah? It's mainly nude stuff she does. Oh, really? There's a lot of nude stuff on there. Is that there. what Instagram people do? I don't know. I th- I th- it depends what approach you take. Hmm. Uh, but So, my idea of an Instagram model is, is like the, the girl in the gym outfit who goes to the gym with loads of makeup on and sticks her butt out and doesn't actually do anything. So you, you want but they s- take photos near gym equipment a lot. So, you want Celeste Bonin? No, but she, she works out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> She's... <laughs> She li- she lifts all the time. Dare you. <laughs> right, and finally, Sam McEwen has emailed in on July 22nd to say, Hi guys, really enjoy the show. Here's my crap gimmick. He, Liam. He, Liam, is a balloon salesman who is a <laughs> large man that wrestles in a bright rubber clothing each and every week. His theme music will be 99 red balloons. However, the clothing is not too tight as he's afraid of getting pins and needles. He comes down to the ring with a wheeled stand, uh, which has tons and tons of helium balloons, giving them out to the kids on the way. Imagine the merch sales. Despite being a very large man, he is agile and billed at only 150 pounds and, pro- and proves this by being light on his feet too. Uh. This is the bit I like. His promo, his promo in ring involve him taking a large gasp of the helium balloon and does his promo in the high voice that normally is associated with t- uh, taking helium balloons. He does this after every sentence. When he debuts, he can p- put in dominant squash matches that the commentator will call pop matches. The issue is that with he, Liam, uh, he, Liam, the longer he is out there in the ring, the more deflated he looks. His finishing move is a top rope senton called the lead balloon. I didn't start out liking that. Oh, yeah? This is... But I ended... I, th- I thought it ended very strong. Uh, whereas the other two gimmicks, I started out loving, but I, I felt like they went off. But this won me over. Why isn't it called Heel 
Liam, though. Because it's he, Liam. Yeah, I know, you can say, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> he or Liam is... But it, but it doesn't sound like helium. It does, if you say it. No, you say helium. 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 Helium does not sound like helium. But he, Liam, isn't a word. Like it's... <laughs> well, Liam is a word. Liam, but, but you just Liam put is a name. We have a writer it. called Liam. I, I know Liam's a word, but having H-E-E hyphen in front of it... Yeah, I think it works. I don't think that works. Also, you missed out cheap pops... <laughs> yes. Which is, you know, it's like every. It's great to be here in Milwaukee, and you just can <laughs> pop one of the balloons as everyone cheers. But if he's a heel, yeah, it's, it's confusing. I think he has to be a baby face. I am. Um, I love the idea. So the promo delivery in the high pitch voice, mm-hmm. really like. Uh, and I also like the fact that he gets deflated throughout the match. Yeah, lead balloon finish, and that he's really big, but doesn't weigh anything. Yes. That's that's quite ingenious. But out of the out of the three, I don't think any they're all like good, but I don't think any are, are roster worthy this week. I would make a pitch for Helium. Um I I think he there's something we can do with him. You you're really passionate about that. Really is a strong word. Okay. I just you got, we've got to maintain <laughs> crap standards. We can't you're, just... you're right. But I think that he Liam does um he does facilitate all of the crap standards that we want. He fulfills, just, that's what I was I thinking. can't see him on the roster. Like when we've got the orange. <laughs> oh, oh yes. Like suppose. like visually I can't really differentiate them in my head. Yeah. Maybe we need to put like a big like numbers on him if it comes out for people's birthdays. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so a developmental contract. Developmental. Yeah. Not not you're not getting a card made. And if you want to send in a mailbag question, all you have to do is become one of our awesome pledge hammers over on Patreon at any dollar amount and leave your question in our awesome community segment. Segment section. This one comes in from Josh Lee. My question is, who do you think is severely underrated, not just by higher ups, but also fans? Huh. When I say this, I mean we all believe Russo and Rusev, Russo, R- Russo is not underutilized. Uh, Rusev and Cesaro are being underutilized and underrated by WWE management, but all the fans really like them. I really like Fabian Eichner in NXT. I think he's quick and powerful and has such deceptive strength for a man with his speed. He is exactly the kind of wrestler a lot of us like in 2018, and yet he doesn't get the love he deserves. Massive fan, keep up the good work, Ollie, Luke and Laurie. That is from Josh Lee. So the first name that sprung to mind, because it's difficult to find someone who neither side likes it seems to be quite a definitive Mm -hmm. down the middle either management loves them because you're big and that's all you've got going for you or because if you're working for wwe you're going to be pretty good uh or 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 you're uh, but that's to say like hmm. Mm, so i mean the one that sprung to mind isn't with wwe anymore and i'm not saying this because he tweeted me back but i always liked ryback I always thought he was a guy who could... He just had such explosiveness. Like, I know stuff happened when he was he petered out with the Rybaxel and the Paul Heyman stuff, but when he was being built up for Punk and in the John Cena mix, that was amazing. And I always thought he was the standout, really, of the Nexus. I was like, well, you know, you can use the Nexus to get Barrett over and Gabriel, but really... The guy who's going to Batista his way out of it is Skip Sheffield, but he got injured. Like, he was always the one who would get the spears at the end. The big clotheslines. Yeah, clotheslines. And he just had such an explosive impact, kind of like Goldberg. I thought they their movement and the way they just threw themselves into things was, was very similar. And he was a good promo. Bully Ryback was was really funny, I thought. Uh, of course, he's, you know, he's he's gone a bit crazy at out there he's he does i don't think he says the smartest things on record <laughs> why would you say some of that stuff yep. when there's a recording uh but the I sound like hulk hogan there <laughs> why would you have those views if you're being recorded for them uh but i yes yeah, so i would but fans don't seem to like ryback well i once said he should go to new japan and everyone was like no he's got no place in new japan i was like 
I didn't know it was out of step with popular opinion here. Well, I think there were, in his original, like, rise, so that CM Punk thing when he had the Hell in a Cell match with him, which was, like, the dumbest thing that company could have possibly done oh, yeah. because that killed all momentum that he had. There, I think there were people that were really into Ryback. I personally never was. Um, and I would almost agree with you. I don't think a lot of the crowd were either because he just got Goldberg chance during mm. his matches. Feed which- me more. He did. He did Eventually, get over. Eventually, he did. But yeah. Yes, but a lot at the so right at the start, everyone was like, "You are a rubbish Goldberg," mm. and so I think a lot of people sort of turned off from him already. I'm going to pitch to you though. Okay. Someone who you just absolutely do not get on with, um, and who I think there is a lot of potential there is Apollo Cruz. Okay. I think there's a lot you can be to be done with Apollo you Cruz. Can't just say that. You need a bit more. I think that he is someone who is, uh, with, like, maybe his size is what's going against him, but he's so athletic. He, he's got a really good look about him. His entrance music is awesome. All he needs is a mouthpiece and not to just be, hey, I'm Apollo Crews and I smile. Wah! Like, that's not a character. What he needs is an actual defined character. And I think that you can get something with, uh, with Apollo Crews. People loved him before he came into NXT as Uha Nation. Nation. People were raving about him. And I was like, I can't wait to see this guy. I watched his first TakeOver match when he debuted. He blew me away. But then he never followed up on it. And I, I haven't seen what everyone else saw on him. Like, it hasn't come through. Mm-hmm. I don't think... Even, like, you say the mouthpiece is is what he needs. I think it's more fundamental than that. He, he's lacking some kind of charisma or connection. That, But then again, I said the same thing about Jeff Hardy. So... <laughs> He did okay, didn't he? So our next question comes in from a a lasagna enthusiast. So I'm assuming Garfield. Uh, Maybe a common question, but how do I convince my roommate, with a capital R, to give wrestling a chance? He pretends to hate it, but I got him to watch a bit, and he got super interested in Champa vs. Dozovic on NXT, and ever since then he's been really down on it. Which is fine, except that uh, that he constantly tags... Uh, he constantly tags in on it while I'm watching. Any feedback would be neat. So mm. that he has a, uh, this person I should say, has a roommate who appears to like wrestling and will watch wrestling when it's on, but can't get into it to the point where he would want to watch a YouTube channel about wrestling, for example. I think we all know someone like that. Someone who, who rags on wrestling all the time, but then when it's on, does sit down and sits down and goes, no, oh, that's not realistic. I might just go away then. <coughs> I'll well, stay here. Yeah, and then at the end, oh, it's rubbish, wasn't it? <laughs> well, there's something in there. You know, you like, you've got an idea of what of how wrestling's perceived, and that's stopping you from treating it a bit more fairly. Uh, yeah, don't show him main roster stuff. That's going to make it worse. I would say, but maybe it actually might uh, help oh. because it's it's designed for a mainstream audience. It's designed for people who don't like wrestling. I think I think WWE is designed for kids, hmm. a kids mainstream audience. I, I'm starting to question this. If WWE is designed for kids, because they say bitch a lot for starters, there's a lot of these. Sometimes they do these set like they do a lot of feuds that are based around internet storylines about like real life dirt, uh, you know, dirt sheet stuff, which kids aren't going to care about. When I say kids, I kind of mean sixteen and under. Even so, I don't know. I think like I'm and. Whatever. Uh, but I, I don't think WWE is the way to go, especially if he got involved in that Champa Dozovic match. So, New Japan, uh, but choose the matches wisely. See if he gets into the athletic side or the story side. Maybe, yeah, maybe he'll, he'll have some, you know, morbid glee in the ridiculousness of WWE storylines. Yeah, I I would almost go with the, the opposite of that. I think main roster is almost the way to go. Almost like using it as your gateway drug um, and getting them hooked that way. And then, because then what you don't want to do is show them the best wrestling you possibly can because it might just be boring. Like someone, like we watch wrestling, when we watch New Japan, we see the intricacies that they do in there and that's what kind of gets us into it. Sorry, yes? Mike Awesome. Masada Tanaka from ECW One Night Stands 2006. Shown that. Five minutes out of his time. Yep. If he's not hooked after that, that's have your, a few beers. That's your answer right there. <laughs> uh, Ryan Sanderson asks, with the May Young Classic being a yearly thing now, do you think next year they should experiment with a round robin tournament? Two blocks with two winners facing them in the final, like the G1 or the best of the Super Juniors, or should they stick to the traditional single elimination style? I think the first question is, are you going to watch it? <laughs> I, I was going to... Uh, yeah, I, they could do it either way. <laughs> I, I probably won't watch it. Uh, I think it depends on the talent. 
Like, the, the, at least with the tournament, you can get rid of the no good people quickly. Yeah. And, and they're, not, they're not all great. So, but the last, like, the last four, four matches yeah. were, were, were pretty decent. So the G1 would require, a, a G1 structure would require a lot more matches. It's a lot more than I'm going to have to watch and then resent it. And it's going to have the, the match quality will go down because they're not you. It's not a New Japan roster, which is arguably one of the best in ring rosters of all time. Yeah, I am. Um, so I only really watched the first round of the Mae Young Classic, and I watched the semi finals. And there was one good match in all of the first rounds, which was Meiko Satomura. So obviously it was going to be great, and the rest of it was at times god awful. Mm. Um, so. I'm not sure having more of that is the way around it. Maybe sticking to a single elimination is the best way forward. But that's not to say a round robin style bracket tournament has no place on main roster television. Like it'll be great to have something like that play out over a month of weekly television. It gives everyone something yeah. to do. Like that's one of the biggest criticism of against Raw, particularly SmackDown, is that a lot of those guys just sit in the back doing absolutely sweet FA, just doing nout. A tournament like that, around like a round robin G one style tournament, gives something, ev- gives everyone something to do, and it's stakes as well. Absolutely. And lastly, Lendl Brenson asks, "Hey, do you realise it's the third straight Survivor Series that AJ is the WWE champion, and not once is he in the featured match or main event? Two years ago, he was in the five on five Survivor Series match, but it was headlined by Brock and Goldberg. Last year, he faced Brock, but the five on five was the main event. Well, hmm. Triple H was the main event. WWE care enough to have him as." WWE champion. I guess that doesn't mean anything either because it's the same title won by Jinder, but why isn't he seen as a main eventer? What is their deal? With five question marks. Yeah, I think you did you answer it in your question. It, d- WWE don't see the SmackDown champion as as big a deal no. as no it's like not even when when the universal title was missing from Raw. Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe was still the main event. Main eventing. Yeah. So, yeah, n- n- no chance. No, t- uh, they can say all they want. Maybe when it moves to Fox next year and they actually need to get better ratings for it, it'll be different. But I, I can't. I can't. Not, not for a long time. I don't think they see AJ as a main eventer. He's a workhorse. Exactly. He's yeah. a workhorse. That he's got the WWE Championship and had it for a year because people like him. Uh, the gender thing was a, as an experiment that didn't quite work. But people like AJ, and they're just quite happy for him to be champion and have his mid-card championship matches. You, the problem when you have two title belts, and the reason why I've always hated two title belts, is that one has to feel more important than the other. One is always pushed as like your main title. And it kind of flopped in the ruthless aggression stuff between the WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight Championship. But there were times when the World Heavyweight Championship was opening pay-per-views. And it was just treated as a complete afterthought. Similarly, there were times when the WWE Championship was seen as the secondary title. So it's just a case of they don't see it as the main title at the moment. They don't see it as important as the Universal Championship. The common thing there is what's ever on SmackDown hmm. is the, they see as the secondary title. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, but that's all we've got time for today. Please click the videos that have just appeared on our laps to catch up with the latest WrestleTalk awesome things and check out Fight Forever Wrestling in the link in the video description below. It's going to be a fun run of shows. We're going to be at the London one. I've been Ollie Davis. This has been The Other One, Luke Owen. And that was rambling.